So good morning, everyone. It's um, very interesting to listen to all the discussions from the perspective of the ship owner, from the perspective, obviously, of the oil and gas companies and the various uh, different um, uh, people who've um, participated in the discussions earlier. Um, so from our perspective, um, what is the role of the individual regu regulator and how can we uh, make things smoother uh, for the industry that we represent? Um, I would have to agree with um, what uh, Ms. Wright said um, earlier in the discussion, that, um, competitiveness, that um, the IMO is essentially the organization that we should all um, agree regulates uh, the industry. And that, I think, is something that everyone um, pretty much um, unanimously agrees on. And that is something that should um, continue to apply. But then as individual regulators, how do we fit within that and what are our responsibilities? So those are the things that um, uh, I'd like to talk about today. Um, obviously, uh, not just with respect to Sulphur 2020, but also on a wider level. Um, so as a regulator, we are faced with the various different uh, challenges that um, come our way, same as obviously all the individual uh, companies that are uh, within our sector. Um, but uh, one of the things that is um, actually quite um, uh, a big question is, should we uh, be looking at, at uh, regional measures? Should we be looking at international sort of um, uniformly applicable measures? And uh, to what extent should uh, all of these apply? And secondly, how do we uh, ensure sustainability in a wider sense? So sustainability, obviously, um, we tend to think about it as something that refers to the environment. And uh, as the gentleman uh, very rightly said, the, the health of, of people and children around us. And uh, that's definitely a major part. But also sustainability has to do with how do we continue to uh, be part of international trade in, in a way that ensures that shipping um, still uh, remains a major part of that, um, of that equation. So for us, I think there's, um, there's a lot of stuff that is going on and that is changing. So um, embracing change as a tool to improve is, of course, very important. Uh, but for us, it's also very important to remain uh, a factor of stability as well, because uh, when regulation is stable and when it is um, predictable and when people know how to respond to it, um, then um, there's a better and smoother, smoother transition into uh, the changing environment that we all need to step into. Uh, and when one looks at the goals of, of shipping, I think um, there's a lot that actually does remain constant. We want safe shipping, as we always have. We want greener shipping, as we always have. Uh, but we also want to remain competitive, and the only way that this can happen is if we all employ um, holistic strategies which uh, address all the different issues, uh, keeping in mind that the goals uh, are fairly constant despite the changes in the means and the tools. Uh, so for us, just a little bit about um, uh, Cyprus as, as a center. We've We've um, uh, got a shipping deputy ministry now, which is a new, um, a new development. We've been around for a year, and we are an autonomous um, um, deputy ministry that reports to the president so that we can take forward the issues of the shipping industry in a very um, kind of uh, focused way, um, excluding other transport uh, means which have remained with, a, with another ministry, the Ministry of Transport. Um, so in our uh, objective, of course, uh, excellence of service is similar to uh, what was mentioned in regards uh, to Singapore, of course, having one-stop service is very important to us, and upgrading the services uh, that we've got uh, is also um, is also very, very important. So um, I guess um, being adaptable in today's world is very important. It's one of the things that we want to be doing by obtaining feedback from all of our clients on, you know, what we should be doing and what we um, and, and what we ought to be changing. And leveraging on technology, obviously, uh, is crucial in remaining relevant um, to provide a service that is client orientated. So. Um, 
not going to really go into the, the specifics, but we are updating a lot of our uh, services and a lot of our fees to ensure that we do remain um, relevant. Um, but um, in addition to that comes the quality, of course, which is uh, indispensable. Um, in terms of um, upgrading our services, I think, as I mentioned, automation is key, uh, but also uh, having one um, dedicated contact person to be catering to clients is also very important. Um, safeguarding competitiveness. So we've spoken a lot about uh, regulation and competitiveness as uh, something that needs to be around for the shipping industry to be sustainable. Uh, for us, it's not um, just about fees, it's also about making life easy and business friendly, and that is something uh, that we also take very seriously. Uh, but international relations is uh, one of the key things that all regulators should be doing. Uh, I think we have a responsibility as members uh, of the Council of the IMO, as members of uh, the EU, to be providing information which is uh, relevant. And for that, a great deal of preparation is required. So I think a lot of the discussions that have taken place um, sort of indicate that you know we are very good at making uh, rules and rules are necessary, um, but preparing for those, for the implementation is also very important. So uh, for the new strategy for GHG um, emissions, I think uh, one lesson that we could take from uh, the discussions going on about sulfur is that uh, we can and should be preparing um, a lot more in advance. And that's why uh, both at MEPC 73 and MEPC 74, we uh, submitted um, some documents which um, um, discuss the immediate measures that we believe should be taken um, so that we are actually ready to uh, welcome those changes, both as an industry and uh, more generally with all the synergies with obviously the other industries that we uh, work with. So uh, one other thing I'd like to mention is uh, blue growth. Um, a lot of um, how we develop has to do with the human talent that was mentioned earlier, but also with um, making use of academia, making use of research and innovation in a constructive way. Um, so we um, very recently uh, have heard the very good news that one of our projects has been um, has finished third in an evaluation process by the EU in Horizon 2020. Um, so Cyprus is now developing something called uh, the CMMI, the Cyprus uh, Maritime Marine and Maritime Institute, which. Uh, will be obtaining funding from the EU and from the Cyprus government to uh, build a center of excellence which will be um, developing technology in order to help the maritime industry and of course startups uh, are all welcome to be housed within that framework to develop the uh, various um, technological uh, needs that can cater to the industry. Um, so. Um, we're very happy that this happened because we have the highest um, absorption rate in the EU of um, uh, Horizon 2020 funds, uh, which is uh, the program that this belongs to. And together with another two successful projects, we think that we can um, really take um, maritime um, uh, innovation uh, forward and to help play a part in that. And in closing, and with one minute to go, um, Nicholas, I would like to invite all of you to Maritime Cyprus, which uh, uh, is our conference uh, that we, um, as a government, organize uh, for 30 years now. Um, so the date is um, 6th to 9th of October. We are um, working on um, doing something um, very, um, w we hope, very interesting uh, in October. So we hope to see you all there. So thank you very much for your attention and have a successful conference. Thanks.